Hi, Peter. Thanks for joining me today. Thanks, Mandy. So you've written recently about the possible takeover bid of the Australian energy infrastructure company APA by the Hong Kong-based organisation CKI. Can you just elaborate on your concerns around this proposal? Well, this is something that might normally be expected only on the business pages of our Australian newspapers. But in fact, I think there is reason to be concerned about this because of the extent of ownership of Australian critical infrastructure, both gas and electricity, which would fall into the hands of one company. Um, and it's particularly relevant that it's a Hong Kong company, CKI Enterprises. So with that in mind, can you take us through APA's existing gas networks in Australia and specifically what this would look like when combined with um, CKI's uh, in existing investments in the country? Sure, it's quite a lengthy list, but this is what it amounts to. If you look at what CKI already controls in Australia, um, and they've been buying steadily into gas and electricity assets since the year 2000, right now CKI has 63% of electricity transmission and distribution in Victoria, 97% in South Australia, 61% of gas transmission and distribution in Victoria, 79% in South Australia, 24% in Queensland, as well as 43% of the gas transmission pipelines in Western Australia. So I've told you now what CKI owns by itself uh, on the basis of really acquiring Australian assets since the year 2000. Let me now tell you what those figures would look like for electricity and gas industries if CKI buys APA in its $20 billion takeover. CKI's control of gas transmission and distribution pipelines would increase to 68% in Victoria, 86% in South Australia, 72% in Queensland, as well as 57% of the high pressure gas transmission pipelines in the Northern Territory, and 62% in Western Australia. The APA acquisition will also add two important electricity assets to CKI's existing electricity interests, they being 63% of Victoria and 97% of South Australia. The additional critical infrastructure being the transmission interconnectors between New South Wales and Queensland and New South Wales and South Australia. And then the next question is, look at what um, a expanded CKI would look like in terms of Australia's energy infrastructure if you then add in other Chinese owned assets. And here I'm thinking particularly about State Grid which is a Chinese state-owned entity that's very heavily invested into Australian electricity infrastructure. So if you're looking at Chinese holdings of Australian critical infrastructure, the figures would come down to this. Chinese and Hong Kong interests would effectively control 100% of electricity transmission and distribution in Victoria, South Australia and the ACT, as well as 99% of gas transmission and distribution in Victoria. You would have 100% of gas transmission and distribution in New South Wales in the ACT, 86% in South Australia, 78% in Queensland, 74% of gas transmission in the Northern Territory, and 62% in Western Australia. Wow, those figures are scary. So what exactly does this mean in terms of our national security? Well, it seems obvious to me, although perhaps not to some others, that this does present a national security problem to Australia. Uh, effectively, through a series of piece-by-piece -piece decisions over the last decade, we've really allowed um, the majority of our electricity and gas infrastructure to now be held by a very small number of overseas companies, with CKI Holdings, the Hong Kong company, emerging as the biggest of all of these if it succeeds in its takeover bid of APA. And I think that does give rise to some reasonably serious national security as well as competition issues. It's important to understand that there's more to this than simply pipe infrastructure. The pipes just move gas around the country which powers a great deal of industry and also Australian homes. And that's what makes this critical infrastructure. It's the direct link between what APA produces and how Australians heat uh, their houses and how they cook their food. Um, it's that important to all of us.
It's also worth noting that gas will play in fast startup electricity generation an increasing role, which complements intermittent renewable generation to support the stability of the electricity grid. So in fact, the interconnections between gas and electricity are becoming tighter and tighter in terms of the overall power picture in Australia. And that also points to the interconnection of ownership involving state grid, a state-owned uh, enterprise in mainland China, and CKI uh, from Hong Kong. In fact, both entities are as invested into Australian gas infrastructure as they have been invested into Australia's electricity infrastructure. It's worth making the point that Australia is investing around $200 billion on new military hardware. That largely reflects a deteriorating strategic environment in the Asia-Pacific region, and in part, in some way, has to be a reaction against China's unilateral grab for control of the South China Sea. This simply doesn't reconcile with a willingness to allow Chinese interests to control our energy networks. So, correct me if I'm wrong, you don't exactly need to own an asset for it to be hacked. So, in this context, does ownership really matter? I think ownership helps enormously if you're interested in being able to do cyber damage to critical infrastructure. And this is actually one of the things that's a little different from where we were, say, 10 years ago, where cyber enabled industrial control systems perhaps weren't as important in the management of critical infrastructure as they are now. So we've seen examples um, internationally of how um, foreign um, intelligence agencies have been able to hack into the electricity system in Ukraine. For example, the Russians hacked into uh, Ukrainian electricity distribution in December of 2015, shutting down electricity distribution over quite a large part of the country. So you don't have to own the asset. But I think it's also true to say that if a, a foreign company, a Chinese company, owns an asset, that creates m many more uh, ways in which it is possible to actually hack in and do cyber damage. All of a sudden it means to say that you've got to be concerned about who has physical access to the hardware and software of the industrial control systems and that puts in place a different kind of strategic management of the security of these firms than we've had to think about in the past. Mm. But Hong Kong is an autonomous region or does the PRC hold sway over a business that goes on there? Well, this is really one of the tragedies for Hong Kong companies because for the better part of a century under British control, Hong Kong was operating largely as an autonomous province. Hong Kong has now been back under Chinese control for almost exactly 20 years. And what we're seeing is um, the, the increasing control of uh, the Communist Party and China's intelligence apparatus was uh, formerly largely autonomous territory. So now Hong Kong business understands that you know if they want to be successful in a Chinese um, system, um, it's Beijing they have to be listening to rather than the autonomous um, Hong Kong legislature. And I think this is um, the tragedy that um, CKI now faces is that it might well wish to be operating really as a, as a private business. But can any Chinese business or can any Hong Kong business say no if the Chinese intelligence services come knocking at their door? Um, the answer to that is no. So unfortunately, um, in Hong Kong of 2018, I think we do have to be concerned about how deep the control of the Communist Party and the Chinese intelligence apparatus actually runs. Mm. It seems to me that governments are suddenly much more interested in the security of critical infrastructure. Why do you think this is happening now? I think we've been too willing to turn a blind eye for a number of years to the significant sale of Australian critical infrastructure to overseas assets, and that has been a problem all of its own right. Um, the other factor is the fact that most of this critical infrastructure, electricity and gas, airports, ports, um, large parts of health infrastructure, are now essentially run over internet-enabled industrial control systems. So um, these are systems that can be hacked and we see foreign intelligence agencies actually looking at, well, how can we now exploit the vulnerabilities of internal infrastructure within a country as part of a general effort either to steal intellectual property, to engage in um, espionage by, by stealing big data, um, or indeed just to do damage to a country by being able to flick a switch and all of a sudden you shut different parts of the industrial system down. 
So it's that combination of the degree of foreign ownership, I think, has become probably too large a problem in Australia, and the risk that cyber systems has created a whole new set of attack surfaces for intelligence agencies and for military organisations. Mm. So what do you think will happen next in terms of government decision making? Do you think that this uh, takeover bid will get the green light from government? Well, it seems that we're heading to a point where decisions will be taken within the next few weeks or so. And I think there are really two hurdles that need to be crossed if um, CKI is going to be successful in its takeover bid. Um, the first one is with the Australian Competition and Consumer Commission. And, um, you know, I'm a strategist, I'm not, a, I'm not an economist, but as I understand it, the job that will be in front of the ACCC is to ask if there is simply going to be too much control by one company over too large a part of the Australian economy. And on the face of it, it seems to me that's pretty clear as far as gas and electricity distribution is concerned. Then the, the next part of government, which will have uh, an opportunity to shape advice is the Foreign Investment Review Board. And there the FERB is really being asked the question about are there national security considerations which might give rise to the government saying no to this particular proposal. My own view is FERB should advise the Treasurer not to go ahead with the sale if the Australian Competition and Consumer uh, Commission um, approves it. Uh, which I also think is pretty unlikely. So there, there are two areas where I think Australian agencies will probably say to government, um, this is unwise, um, do not proceed. So finally, just to finish up, do you think, in your opinion, is Australia alone in sort of dealing with this issue of foreign interference or no? Countries are going about dealing with foreign interference in different ways, particularly around foreign investment into critical infrastructure. Uh, the first point would be to say it wouldn't happen in China. There'd be no way a foreign company could get into um, gas or electricity in the way that um, Chinese companies have here in Australia. If you look at the Five Eyes countries, um, I think I see a pattern emerging over the last three or four years which says that countries are now getting much tougher. And really the concern is about intellectual property theft, of which China is a very prominent um, candidate, um, but by no means the only one. And secondly, the risk of having critical infrastructure hacked into. Um, and I think all around the world, what you see is a pattern of countries now getting harder and more and more strict in terms of who they will allow to uh, come into and operate inside their own economies. Mm. Scary pattern and one to keep our eyes on, I'm sure. Thank you so much for joining me this afternoon, Peter. Thanks, Betty.